Okay guys, so now we get uh, to the point of this course. So far everything was the so-called, hey guys, uh, everything so far I was teaching in this whole course for the last seven weeks has been the global, we call it macroeconomic, or the global business environment. We studied trades and jobs and all of those things. <coughs> now we shift from the global macro environment, we shift to the business. Now we focus on international business. And we are getting today to chapter 12. And chapter 12 we can separate out as the most central chapter of the whole course. It is the most important chapter, the most fundamental chapter. It builds entirely on all of the environment stuff that we did so far. And everything else that follows, whether it's organizational structure, business operations, or all the rest of the course, will build on this chapter. So this is like a pivotal chapter. If I have to describe or make a little bit of a picture, a little bit of a picture on you, uh, I mean, it's not a perfect idea, but to give you is uh, like this. You have chapter one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, and so on, up to chapter 11, represents the business environment. All of these chapters will focus on this chapter 12. The chapter 12 is called the capstone chapter, the foundational chapter. And from it, we're gonna be building 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, so 13, 14, 15, and so on. So this is the chapter which ties, is it, is it coming up there? No. This is the chapter that ties everything together okay well and uh, I, I actually see many of you as I'm walking to my accounting class I see many of you having at the same time with me uh, strategy right how many of you take business strategy right the course in strategy only one uh, strategic management. yeah strategic management yeah 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 like 15 students so this chapter is called global strategy It is a little tricky and difficult because it needs some basic foundational understanding of business strategy. And then we got to build a little bit on top of it to global strategy. Uh, the chapter is written very well and you have to read it very carefully all the way through to understand some of the basics so that you can actually handle the rest of the course for the last five weeks. And from this chapter on, will begin the material for the final exam. So from this point on, everything that I'm covering till the end of the semester will be on your final exam. All right, so uh, let's get into some introductory stuff. Uh, so section one is very simple, very easy introduction. And part of the introduction is the simple concept, which is uh, very, very, very common sense, is called global <coughs> standardization. Global standardization will be the idea that as a company, as a business, you want to keep your product the same, exactly the same in all markets around the world. And if you can produce it the same, have it the same, build it the same, this standardization, keeping it standard throughout the world, makes things cheap. So, keeping the product standard makes things cheap. The opposite is called, or is the idea of local responsiveness. Oh, I'm getting messed up here with the 
these markers local responsiveness and the local responsiveness the idea is that you change or modify the product just a little bit let me see because I got all of these messed up completely uh, the product modified so as to fit the local market example that I gave you at the very beginning your Levi's jeans and Levi's jeans of course all uh, uh, you know you can wear all the same and Levi's jeans are by concept conceptually tight jeans well in the Arab world it is not exactly acceptable or appropriate for women to wear tight jeans socially that's not right you try to keep selling them these won't be selling so Levi's will have to call in English customize customize the product so as to fit the culture well what about BMW I mean they make fantastic cars okay they're great they serve perfectly do they need to customize a BMW somewhere for some reason and if you were like me in the Middle East you see the BMWs are a little bit different well they got a bigger radiator because in the Middle East you run 50 degrees 55 degrees when I was teaching and working in, in, in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh uh, I'd be regularly getting in the summer temperatures 50, 55 and I we would register on my last day of work when I was leaving June 30 I'd register a temperature of 61 degree well the car even a BMW would overheat if you use the same standard <coughs> radiator that you would use in Germany well guess what even in Italy many Italian shops would just take the BMW radiator throw it out and put a new bigger one some will do something else they'll use the same radiator they throw the fan which is a small fan and gonna put a lot bigger fan to handle the heat okay because it's very very different also the air conditioning in those temperatures over there 50 55 you just have to have a different air conditioning that can handle 55 degree heat I mean you guys in Germany that's an unfamiliar concept but if you live there in the Middle East even for a week or for a month you'll get to understand what means 55 degrees heat okay so you have to customize it but customizing is expensive meaning costly <coughs> so the basic idea is amazingly <coughs> simple you want to keep it as standard as possible to keep it cheap but yet again you gotta customize to fit the market so the the simple concept in economics is known as a trade-off you need to weigh on the advantages and disadvantages of standardization relative to market responsiveness examples of products which are fairly standardized this iPhone iPhone 4s is identical everywhere in the world there is no customization they just want to keep it as cheap as possible okay uh, same thing with MacBooks MacBooks as I've been around uh, the, the, the world they're pretty much identical in terms of specifications and software and setup and configuration the only thing that is going to be different is the main language when you open it let's say in Taiwan the main language is Chinese you click in settings switch back to English and it's exactly the same no difference so uh, Apple's strategy is to keep it 
perfectly standardized so as to keep costs low and to maintain <coughs> profit margins high. Okay? Is that th th these ideas, the foundation, is it fairly clear? So, if you are going to have a global strategy, meaning you're global, if you're going to be a global business, whatever product or whatever service you have to have, you have to make the fundamental decision how much you're going to keep standardized and how much you will have to necessarily customize. Again, it will also depend on climate, culture, tastes, and all sorts of things. Like, an example, uh, are you guys seeing here, you've been now three months Harley Davidson in here in Thailand? The answer is it's extremely rare because the smallest Harley Davidson is 800 cc, 800 cubic centimeters, and people just don't buy these, and people, and these are way too expensive and way too heavy and not as appropriate for the local conditions. Yeah, people here drive 100 cc, 125, maybe 150, but 800, no one's going to go. So, if you're Harley Davidson, you got to decide, are we going to build a lot smaller engine Harley? Or not? And Harley's strategy is, no, we're not. We're going to stay standard. We're going to keep the 800. If you guys like it, you buy it. If you don't like it, you're not going to buy it, OK? So Harley's strategy is pure standardization. Harley's are identical everywhere in the world. And BMWs are not, OK? At least because of the climate. Now, in Canada and far out north, they have other features to handle the extreme cold. In the Arab world, they got other engineering adaptations to handle the extreme cold. Okay, local responsiveness, okay. All right, section number two. Yeah, I need to get rid of these too, too many over here. I'm gonna keep this too. Uh, Strategy. So, strategy represents the actions that a business chooses or undertakes to achieve its business goals. So, strategy is driven by and determined primarily by the business goals. What is your goal? What is it you're trying to achieve? And most of the times, it all boils down to value. The main goal, I, I should actually put the uh, value here, the main goal of most businesses around the world, especially private businesses, especially corporation, is value maximization. Sometimes in finance they like to call it shareholder maximization or maximizing shareholder value, okay? You want to maximize the price of the stock. But the more general idea is you want to bring the highest possible value to the owners of the firm. That's what all business is about. And now it's actually amazingly simple. It is in any, any elementary business book, especially finance, that business value is determined by two most fundamental factors. That's elementary finance in every textbook. It's also common sense that value is driven by uh, red Profits, which we call profitability. Basically saying the higher the profits, the higher the business value. Different ways, say the more profitable the business, the more valuable it is. That's basic business common sense. And the other one is called Profit growth. Profit 
growth in finance, sometimes they just use the word growth. How fast the business grows. Does the business even grow at all? Growth rate is zero. Does it grow with 1% or does it grow with 10% or does it grow with 20%? One of the fastest growing businesses in the world in the last 15 years was uh, Apple. But now Apple's growth rate, Apple has become so huge where its growth rate have slowed down. They just can't grow as much. And they can't grow as much because the market is already saturated. That's the one reason. But number two, because Samsung and now other, uh, both computer makers and mobile makers are already eating away at their profits. We call these competitive pressures. Competition is breathing in their neck, and a lot of times they are delivering a little better products, okay? Whether it's the laptops, whether it's the iPhones, or even the iPads, and so on. So, growth. If the faster you expect the business to grow, so in this case we say the correct way to say it's growth expectations how fast you expect it to grow in the future. Another way of saying it, saying it is future growth prospects is the same thing. How fast it's going to grow, a lot or a little. Now, one of the relatively fast uh, growing uh, businesses is security business. Businesses are concerned about security, about cryptography, about a lot of things. That's a whole different subject. But the idea is that Business value is determined by the profitability and by growth. Let's see now. Okay, yeah, now it gets very simple. Where or what is profitability in term? So this I should put, let me, I'll change a little bit like this and I'll put an arrow here. So profitability determines value, okay, and growth prospects determine value. Now I'm going to get to see what determines profitability in turn, right? So number one is amazingly simple. Costs, as in, in this case, reduce costs. If you can reduce costs, you would increase profitability. So the ability to reduce costs translates, lower costs translates to higher profitability and to higher business value. That's why businesses outsource. They outsource because they, by reducing their costs, they increase their profits and their profitability and they increase their overall business value. That's all common sense. And the other one is called by raising prices. <coughs> so let me write out a simple, easy, the most fundamental uh, equation in business and in accounting is that Profit equals we call it in accounting like to call it net income, same as profit, revenue minus expenses. The revenue is determined by the price of the product or service. So this is determined by product price or service price that you charge the customer. And expenses are in turn determined by costs. So profits go up by either raising revenues or reducing expenses. You raise revenue by either raising volumes or raising prices or by lowering costs. 
So profitability is driven by lowering costs, okay, and by raising prices. These two things jointly together are driven by a business process called value creation. And I got a little section coming over here. Uh, value creation is the difference between the value which consumers receive, the value which consumers receive, and the costs of the product. And I will tie it with profitability, okay? I'll tie it in a minute with profitability. So it is a process of value creation. You create value by taking inputs and producing, delivering something which consumers value. And you want to make it so that they either value it more or you can produce it as cheap as possible. Okay, <coughs> let's see what else. Profit growth. Profit growth. is determined by, let's see, sell more in existing market is by <coughs> raising volume. Volume is the same as quantity. You sell more quantity. You sell more iPhones. You sell more cameras. You sell more BMWs. So by raising the volume the quantity that you sell and the other one is elementary new markets so you either increase the volume in your current or existing market or you we say create develop or penetrate new markets So, selling more BMWs in Germany will be this one here, and selling more BMWs in China will be over here. So, BMW's growth is coming almost entirely out of foreign markets like China, <laughs> Hong Kong, Singapore, rich Asia, even countries like Turkey, and in Europe, especially Western Europe, BMW's market is stagnant. The market simply doesn't grow, okay? Uh, the French got all the BMWs that they would want to buy. The Greeks got all of them, okay? Even we, Bulgarian market is already saturated. But in Macau, Macau is fantastically rich and <coughs> growing and more and more people are getting there and business is booming and a lot of people make a lot of money and in Macau, you're going to be seeing more and more and more BMWs. And same thing in the Middle East. As oil prices went up and up and up and up and up, and the Arab world, uh, meaning the oil exporting countries, OPEC countries in the Arab world are getting richer and richer and richer, you'd be seeing more and more and more BMWs. Of course, mostly 7 Series, because they won't be buying too many of them. Series over there. So this will be representing new markets. You enter new markets in your so these new markets would be meant the so-called internationalization strategy. Alright, let's write it out over here. Not part of this internationalization strategy. Internationalization strategy is the strategy, the choice to sell more products in foreign markets for, in order to stimulate or increase growth. So you're growing your business by selling abroad. It's common sense. It's internationalization strategy is represented in this factor over here, new markets. 
Okay, uh, let me get now to this part. I'll be writing over here at the top so that you can understand this is uh, at first confusing, but hopefully after I explain it, not anymore. You got three levels over here. This is costs. And we call this is, uh, let's do this for costs. We're going to use this here is represented by C. Okay, this is the cost of production. Then you got a <coughs> price. And this here is the price. So, a product, I'm just picking up numbers just to make up an example. Uh, the cost, it costs six. Okay, it costs six to produce. They charge you ten. But the consumer will always value it higher. Maybe, I'm just picking a random number, 13. That 13 over here will be representing the value to consumer. It is a subjective value. One person, one person will value at 13, another one will value it at 12, and another one will value it at 15. Okay, so this BMW with a monster radiator, you guys in Germany won't value it much. You won't put zero value on it. There's no value on it. But the same monster radiator, you move it to Riyadh, it's going to have a lot of extra value, okay? And the big executive would want to have the extra radiator to keep him cool and not sweating when the outside temperature is 53. So you're going to have this particular value. So you got the costs. Here, now, you got the price. And here, you got the value of a product, okay? I mean, you can also think in terms of an iPhone. An iPhone, uh, let's say, costs less than 100 US dollars to manufacture. <coughs> they sell it for 400, okay? And the consumer, some consumers will value it at five. Now, why is value always higher than the price? And the answer is amazingly simple. If value is less than price, the consumer will never pay the price. They don't like the product. Ah, I'm not going to pay, let's say, 70 for this. Or I'm not going to pay, let's say, uh, $600 for an iPhone, okay? So, the consumer would pay and purchase the product. There will be a transaction only if consumer values it more than the price. Then they'll actually pay for it. If not, they're not going to pay for it. They're not going to spend on it, okay? There won't be any quantity. And now we get to the... Differences. Let's see to make sure that we have the difference between V, which is the total value which the consumer perceives, and C, which is the cost, will represent value creation. Value creation. And therefore, we call it value created. So value created is the difference between the value which consumer sees in a product and the cost which producer it takes to actually manufacture it. This is the value that it creates. They perceive the product to be very valuable, but the cost is very small. Now, here an example where I am trying to create a lot of value for you and not only you is with that little camera. And the reason I'm creating a lot of value is because the cost is extremely small. The cost of that video is almost zero. It's the effort of your good classmate or all of you for 45 minutes to keep 
zooming in and zooming out. But the overall cost of creating the video is very low. The cost of YouTube to all of us consumers is practically zero. So the overall value of the video is relatively high because its cost is practically zero. So V minus C represents, so this minus this is here. Let's make sure. Uh, it's here, all the way to here, is this part, V minus C. That's the value created. And let's make sure we got this price minus C, price minus C, which is the price that the business gets minus the expense, we call it in accounting cost, represents the profit, the profit, okay? So, global standardization makes the product relatively cheap. A different way of saying it is that it is driving costs lower and profit higher, okay? So that's what global standardization is doing. Now, local responsiveness, as I said, a BMW with a big radiator has little value in Germany, but a lot of value, a lot of value in hot Arab countries will be raising these. So local responsiveness and co customization is costly, but this costliness will raise V, will raise the value of the product. Okay? So you customize it a little bit and you bring a lot of value to the product. So customization, so basically the idea of standardization is the following. Standardization is doing this, is pushing this <coughs> lower. And the strategy of customization is pushing this higher. And the overall idea by pushing costs lower or by pushing value higher is to, the difference between B and C is to create more value. So businesses create more value by either driving costs down through standardization or by improving the desirability of the product with customization. So you customize the, profit, the, the, the product to better fit the customer, all right? Uh, example where customization is amazingly necessary is, what they call it the French word is couture, is the French clothing or Italian design. Well, you try to sell American designs in the US, what do you think is going to happen? Nothing. They won't sell. French stuff and Italian designs don't sell in the US because French and Italian are very, very slim and Americans are relatively fat. They won't even fit into it. They can't even put them on, okay? So, you won't be selling anything unless you customize it to make it what's called in America big size, right? You gotta make it big, okay, so that they can actually put the pants on, all right? Big shirts, big everything. So that's the most simple example where you need to customize the product to bring extra value. And of course, the BMW radiator, which I was talking about. So all of these strategies, this here, customization brings and opens more and creates more value for the product. And now I need to finish with one, okay. So 
This doing cheap is known and you study it, you should have studied it. It's called low cost strategy. low cost strategy. And this customization, how do you call it guys over there? How do you call it in your business strategy? Differentiation, differentiation. So this customization leads to differentiation strategy. Your product is a little different, okay? Your product is a little bit customized. Your product is different to fit better the market needs, like bigger radiator, okay? Uh, differentiation will be, uh, in Europe, Coca-Cola is a small little bottle, but the American market, you gotta have a bigger bottle because these small bottles just won't sell okay so that's differentiation strategy so these are the two fundamental business strategies if I remember according to Michael Porter who's the father of business uh, uh, strategy are the low-cost strategy and the differentiation strategy the third mixed type strategy uh, you probably discuss it in your own classes <coughs> over there is called the focus strategy, but at least I'm tying here strategy to profitability and from profitability back to uh, value. Let's see what else I have here. Michael Porter, okay, value creation. Uh -huh. Next thing is part of this whole thing is called and one of the major determinants is called, I already touched it, so it's called competitive pressure. Competitive pressure is when competitors put pressure on you to lower the price. So competitive pressure forces you to lower the price, okay? You can't keep your price high, like iPhone, because Samsung is undercutting and undercutting to the point where I'm saying, I'm not gonna pay the high price of uh, iPhone, I'd rather buy me a much cheaper Galaxy, which is pretty much the same and in many ways better. So, competitive pressure results in number one, lower prices and competitive pressure we say <coughs> pressures profitability so profitability is pressured by competition competition pressures profitability when you say pressure means in this case shrinks profitability all right so in germany bmw pressures mercedes and mercedes in terms pressures BMW and of course Audi because each one pressures the other with lower more competitive price okay so competitive pressure drives prices down but at the same time competitive pressure price uh, drives costs higher because you need to improve your product you need to put in the bigger radiator, you need to put in the better radio, you need to put in this, you need to put in that. In other words, uh, competitive pressure forces you to raise, to raise the value, and in other words, you have to offer better value to the customer, and the fundamental way to offer better value to the customer is to spend more on a little better product. So, you're gonna spend more on a little bigger tire, or on a little 
wider tire, but the bigger and wider tire, you know, provides more stability and reliability of the car, but the wider tire is a lot more expensive, okay? Of course, better values, you want to have better headlights that will not be doing, let's say, 200 meters, but 250 meters, that provides you a better visibility and makes the car safer at nighttime, but you got to put in more expensive headlights, okay? Now, you have a turning point, it's called adaptability, where you turn the wheel right, the headlights turn a little bit to the right. And when you turn to make a left turn, the headlights turn left so that you can better see. This little adaptability requires motors, adapters, and all these things, which make the product a little more expensive. So all of these extra value features drive costs higher and therefore drives profitability lower. So because of the higher price and because of the sorry, the, the, the lower price and the higher cost, profitability goes down. And in strategy, we like to say that the primary determinant of business profitability is the competitive environment or competition determines profitability and competitive pressure drives profitability lower. Is that fairly clear? Is it good enough to take a little break? Yes. Okay, yes.